today we're going to be looking at a concept called reaction mechanisms, which basically just describes how a reaction can occur at the molecular level. A reaction mechanism shows you the sequence of the bond making and bond breaking that occurs during the course of a reaction. Most reactions usually are not really as we write them. When we write them, it kind of looks like it happens all in one step, but really most reactions are usually a series of smaller steps because it's unlikely that all the reacting molecules would all collide simultaneously in just the right orientation with just enough energy in order to make the reaction happen. So as an example, what if we took a bromine molecule and reacted that with two nitrogen monoxide molecules to make two BrNO? For that reaction to happen in a single step, you'd have to take that bromine molecule and two nitrogen monoxide molecules, get them all to collide simultaneously with the right orientation, with enough energy to make it form our product. It's probably not going to happen that way where all the molecules line up just so. Um, and the more molecules you're trying to combine, the harder it is for it to happen in a single step. So what does happen at that molecular level? What probably happens is a series of smaller steps. And what we can do is add those smaller steps together to get our overall reaction. If we took Br2 and added it to nitrogen monoxide, we could get a compound Br2NO. That Br2NO could then go on to react with another nitrogen monoxide to make our final product 2Br. NO. The Br2NOs could cancel out when you add them together, kind of like Hess's law. If the steps cannot add together to get the overall reaction, then that proposed mechanism isn't possible. That Br2NO, the thing we canceled out up above, we call that an intermediate. It's a chemical that gets made in one step of a reaction but is immediately used up in a later step. This next slide here is just to get you to think about some of the things that we saw below, uh, before. So it wants to know, are the steps listed below a possible mechanism for the overall reaction that's also listed below? And to highlight and find those intermediates in these steps. So we need to make sure that if we add all our steps together, if it would equal the overall rate law. So we can see in step one, we produce some dinitrogen dioxide, which immediately goes on and reacts in step number two. It makes dinitrogen monoxide as a product in step two, but that dinitrogen monoxide goes on in step three to be used up as a reactant. That N2O2 would cancel out from step one and step two. Our dinitrogen monoxide cancels out. And then what we have left is two nitrogen monoxide molecules being added to two hydrogen molecules, one from step two and one from step three. They can produce one nitrogen molecule and two molecules of water. One water molecule from step two and one water molecule from step three. This is a possible mechanism. It works because the steps add together to equal the overall equation. Um, and an important tip, your intermediates, those things highlighted in red where they get made in one step and immediately get used up in a future step, you'll never see those appear in overall rate law equations.